You don't want to see my ugly mug. You want to see that. That is the S30C ATC spindle from CNC Depot. Let's review it. I'm not gonna lie, at first I was totally gonna make everybody wait to the end of the video to watch some cut, but I figured I would start off with the very first cut I did. You hear some interesting sounds, we can talk about those as well. Alright, if you're not interested in the actual spindle, then jump to the end for some more cut videos. There are no super high detail cuts, but some cut videos. Otherwise, stay around for more info on the spindle. Let's break this down real quick. The S30C is a 2.2 kilowatt spindle that does 24,000 RPMs. It's ceramic bearing, and it's sitting atop an ISO 30 power draw bar. What makes this thing an ATC is that if you set up a wine rack and you script properly, you can change out tools automatically. And if you don't, you can still change out tools like these faster than an F1 team can change tires. We're going to do two run out tests here. The first one is run out of the actual bore, uh, the taper of the, uh, the actual spindle itself, and that's a tenth of a thou. So that's a really, really amazing run out, all things considered. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do a run out test of the actual tool holders we got. I tested two or three of them. I'm just gonna show you the results of one test, but they were all pretty much the same on that too. I tried these a couple of different ways. I tried a couple of different tool holders. I spun them 90 degrees or so in the 180 degrees or so in the power draw ball. Ended up pretty much getting the same result every time. That's about 5 tenths to 6 tenths of run out um, or 0.02-ish millimeters, which is pretty standard for a tool holder of this quality. If you had some small tools, you'd have to spend some quality time um, tuning them up, but that's that's not to be unexpected with small tools. I'm just gonna run through a bunch of RPMs for you to hear. There were a bunch of people asking for what this thing sounded like, so I'm just gonna shut up and let it run. back of the machine here and what we have is a solenoid and then a sensor and then the feed of the air. The reason we're using a solenoid that has an A and a B is because at all times we're supposed to put about 40 pounds of pressure into the power draw bar, give it some positive pressure. The goal there is to keep dust and other things to get from getting into the power draw bar so there's always a constant pressure. It also probably works as a cooling as well so air is constantly going through the spindle um, to add a little more air cooling. But what you'll see here is this A and this, this pin valve, and he's pretty close, and that's the always on pin valve, and he ends up going, he ends up going to the outside over there. And that's that always on pressure for the power draw bar. Now, when I actuate the power draw bar, which is either commanded, right, the 24 volts, 200 milliamps commanded against the solenoid, or you can press that blue button, command the power draw bar manually. When that happens, this air pressure is released, so it, it vents out back there. And this air pressure is activated, and that goes to that inside one, and that's the 100, 105 pounds of pressure that you're gonna to need to actually run the power draw bar. So you add 105 pounds, it opens the draw bar, you can replace your tool, and then you remove the 100 pounds, the draw bar draws closed, and your tool is held tight. And that would vent out when you, when you switch back to the constant air, that vents out uh, to the B route. What's going on behind there, what's going on uh, back here, is that that's that 9,500 pound 
sensor, I think I have it set to 100. It's an adjustable sensor set to like 95 or 100. I can't remember actually. But that is a normally open sensor. So when there's enough pressure, it actually closes because there's good pressure. I actually don't have a top limit of the pressure. It's just there is or isn't pressure. And then I have that tied to Mach 4. Uh, actually, video there if you want to see how to add sensors to Mach 4 as essentially like the same as an e-stop. So sensor that will kill the machine. In this case, I have that sensor I need to kill the machine on and I have high level outputs on all of my servos that I want to kill the machine on. So that video kind of talks about, you know, setting up my list of things that are, to me, the same as hitting a limit switch or pressure or hitting the e-stop, something that I don't want to stop the machine completely. Also, I have the same kind of thing going on on the spindle. So we have the spindle programmed to air out. Enough about the spindle. Let me give you a reason why I bought it in two seconds. Yep. That was a two second tool change. Let's do it again. Yep, that's pretty much why I bought this spindle. I ain't gonna lie. Let's jump over to the tool holders. Now I got the starter kit and that came with four of these tool holders. They have an ISO 30 taper on them and uh, they're 24,000 RPM and they've got an HSK pull stud if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they're ER32 collets, and you pick four collets with it. Now, if you are familiar with uh, a router or a spindle, then you might not be familiar with the idea of a tool holder. So a tool holder is going to take essentially that spindle taper or that router taper uh, that would hold your bit, and it's going to make it a removable part. So that's what I was flipping out in the two seconds, if you're not familiar. Now, tool holders are an additional cost, so... For instance, here's some shots of all the tool holders I have for my mill. And the reality is that you're going to need to kind of plan for how many tool holders you need. They're not, they're not super expensive, they, but they can get up there. You know, really nice tool holders can be 150 bucks. These are probably in the range of 40 to $50 tool holders. I mean, the run out was a little, little long. It's definitely not like a, a, a super high end tool holder. They're not bad tool holders. Here's a close up of one. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's a decent, well ground, real ground tool holder, um, but it's not going to be a $200 tool holder. It's going to be, you know, probably $45 or $50 tool holder. They are marked as made in Germany, so there's that too. Let's move to the front real quick and talk about how it actually mounts up to the machine. Um, card over in the corner if you're interested in actually looking at the install, but uh, here's kind of the, the mounting bracket I had before. You can see it's a pretty straightforward, it's a much smaller amount of aluminum mounting uh, on it was just holding an 80 millimeter kind of chinesium spindle that the bearings died on which is why we changed over and the new spindle is held by six fairly beefy bolts and you can see this was held on by four not so beefy bolts so obviously gonna be a big rigidity improvement here just in general you're gonna more surface area more bolts uh, a more rigid connection uh, to your z-axis Things aren't all sunny in upgrades on this thing. We did have a noise issue. So spindles, if you're not familiar, are the enemy of noise. They're generally AC powered. They're high hertz, in our case, up to 400 hertz. So there's a lot of voltage going over 400 hertz. They're three phase, and they're running right next to a bunch of relatively low voltage DC. And we have some cheap sensors these are these cheap sensors i was running and they didn't have a problem with the old spindle not sure why but with the new spindle they would throw false positives now there's no electrical connection between the barrel which would then be grounded by the spindle because we're good and we ground our spindles and any of the electronics inside but my theory is that those cheap little sensors there's enough noise dumping to ground that that noise would induce a charge on the transistor and it'll insert physics and uh, the MPN transistor would would fire and we would get a false positive. I replaced them with Panasonic GX8A. They're IP68 sensors that I actually got to replace on my mill because my mill has a known issue with the sensors it comes with. These are very tight sensors. I think the one millimeter sensing range on aluminum and it's like a, a 0.4 millimeter trigger distance so uh, it's a much more precise sensor for mills it's good to get you close 
for routers, it's probably way better than we actually ever need to worry about. Um, so there's that, and so be aware if you get this guy, you might have that issue. We also went ahead and did a, one other thing. I'll show you here. We uh, we added a, a ferret bar around the wire for the spindle, just you know, a little bit of preventative maintenance. It, I don't know that it helped at all. We ended up having to do this sensor replacement on the Z-axis and both ends of the Y-axis. The X-axis seems fine. I guess there's enough aluminum between the x-axis and the spindle that uh, whatever noise is dissipated by the time it gets there. All right, you made it this far. You finally get some cut videos. Here's actually the second cut I did on this machine. You can see the first cut there up close in the foreground. So I just moved over. And as much as I like you guys, I hate dust and wood chips. I like my dust shoe so you're going to get the noise of the vacuum and that in this which hey you get kind of full experience of what it's like cutting with this thing um the cuts we did were not extraordinarily uh extreme i do think i i see some rigidity advantage uh we'll see that i'll do some close-ups here after it cuts this is cut it um say 125 to 150 inches a minute there's some slotting and uh, there's some adaptive tool pass at uh, 0.15 inch with the cut. Everything's done at a uh, quarter inch depth of cut. It's a quarter inch tool. It's a compression bit, so it was also first time using a compression bit. So I don't know what's what's because of the bit, what's become because of the spindle. Maybe in the day spindles are spindles. Let's uh, listen to the cutting. spindle the cut results are great um, you can actually I don't know if you can see them here but you can actually see the tool marks from the tool which means I'm cutting pretty gosh darn fast um, never would have had this before here's some sword rack cutting uh, again for science I didn't have the top on when I did this this here is just doing some contouring then we're gonna jump over to actually cutting There's some noise in the upper bearings. I've talked to CNC Depot. They're backing the product. What they have told me is that it's likely just some grease in the grease packing that's working its way away. Uh, the sound is going down, but they've also told me that if the issue continues, they're going to work with me. They're going to make it right. They've been super great to work with. They're really proactive. They've been contacting me, 
asking how the build was going. So good company so far, great experience. Um, running air is more work than you might think it is if you haven't done it before. Uh, totally worth the effort, but it is more effort. And at the end of the day, would you would I buy it again? That's like the ten thousand dollar question. And the answer is, well, I guess no. It's a two to four thousand dollar question, um, which is a lot less than sixty four thousand, but more than ten. The answer is yes, I would buy it again. If you're a pro shop, you should have an ATC of some kind on your routers and your mills. The value of being able to set a, set a program and walk away allows you to do more, let the robots do the robots work, is it's going to make up its two to $3,000 cost depending on you know, options and stuff. If you're a hobbyist, I can't tell you what your budget is. I can't tell you how much fun you have. As a hobbyist, I can tell you this is worth it to me. Uh, I love the fact that I don't have to pull out some wrenches and fight to you know remove tools and change collets and everything else. This is literally a button press. You saw the video, three seconds to five seconds to change a tool, then you touch off and you go again. I can make that faster you know, table side tool offsets. And I'm mentioning I am going to set up a wine rack, but with this table, because I want to keep all 48 by 96 inches of available space, I'm going to have to actually have my wine rack extend and retract. So that little extra bit of engineering, expect that in new videos. As always, appreciate your time. appreciate you watching this. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And regardless of what you thought, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notifications icon. I really appreciate that. And uh, see you guys on the flip side. I'm just going to like do some weird shots like this because... There's a lot of echo in this room. I'm going to have to get rid of the echo in this room. Echo! Echo! That's what my four-year-old does.